free nip, uh, free the nipple. When oh, free the nip. Hash, free the yeah. nip. When we're hashtagging that's free the nipple. That's still happening? And we're putting that out there. Yeah, that's a part of the movement. When we're putting that out there, we're not just talking about perky white B cups, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about all nipples. We're talking about trans nipples. We're talking about black nipples, brown nipples, all, like you're saying all nipples shades too in much. between. Stop saying nipples. It's making me uncomfortable. <laughs> too many nipples. Nipple, 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 nipple. I guess, and I, and I definitely, I, I think that this is part of, I agree with what you're saying. I think this is part of what intrigues me um, about the body positive movement is that, so, you know, um, I'm, uh, so, so the, the reaction is against kind of the stereotypical ideal of um, like c- cisgendered white or, or, or tanned white <laughs> skinned woman with long straight hair, probably light eyes and a thin but toned body, thin but toned body with some curves. Right. That's kind of the standard of beauty that has been set. Um. And that is a very narrow standard of beauty uh, for, for at least f- uh, for women, right? Uh, if, if we want to think about what what the standard of beauty for men might be, you know, would be a six pack abs, um, and you know, with the V, what's the V called? The Ken V, the what are those lines called? What are you talking about? <laughs> you don't you don't have any. That's why you. Oh, have any. <laughs> did you just body shame me? <laughs> I did just body oh my goodness let me retreat into my body positive free the v hashtag free the v right now listeners just i'm being you know what body I'm talking shamed. about the little things that run up, you know nope those now i will now i will stay in ignorance because you body shame me and i will now be <laughs> discordant for the remainder of this podcast well you stay discordant it ain't got nothing to do with that whatever those things are called right and there's he, sh- he should also be tall Right. Um, And and so those are those are like very rigid and narrow definitions uh, for most folks, even for white folks. Most folks don't fall into those limited frameworks. And so especially when you take into account any melanated people, um, you take into account people various heights and people with various body shapes that don't fit in there. Um, you want to, ex- it leaves a lot of people out of the conversation. And so the, about, and it leaves a lot of people um, unable, like really unable to meet that standard of beauty. What I, what intrigues me about this conversation and why I think it needs to be um, a continued conversation is the reason why that's problematic is because we tend to overlay. Mm, that's not the right word. We tend to put, um, some portion of our inherent self-worth in alignment with our physical attractiveness. So that if I don't fit into that ideal, then I, then, then I internalize that as something being wrong with me. Um, and I think, I think when it becomes, I think it becomes more deeply rooted for melanated people is because Oftentimes, our phenotype, so our skin tone and um, and our musculature and our body types, our hair texture, all of those things get associated with ugliness, with less than, with unappealing, with unattractive. And so that then gets tied into our overall sense of value and worth as as a people. So I think this is and, and and so I see there being opportunity in the body positive movement to say, let's let everybody let everybody um, be celebrated in its own way. But I don't know if the if the idea in the movement is inclusive enough and in that it really takes in structures of racism, stru- structures of racism and how they intersect with with black and brown people's bodies. It's not. And it's a state in a sense of their state of actual well-being and health. It's not. Right? Not just about aesthetics, but their well-being and health. It is not. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> you think I didn't hear you the first two times? I'm making sure everybody hears. 
I need a megaphone. It is not. <laughs> right? It's not. And here's the reason why. <clears throat> As I sit here listening to you, um, you know, being a, a Brooklynite, B, uh, uh, BK, all day, <laughs> when I'm up in these streets, let me stop acting like I'm that right. hard, because Lord knows I'm not. <laughs> As I travel and traverse, <laughs> I see women of color who are quite okay with their bodies. Mm-hmm. I see men of colors who celebrate those bodies, which some would say are obese or morbidly obese. I see women comfortable in their skin, right? So the size is not their issue. But I also see women, women of color, who have turned their brown eyes blue, who have blonde, almost canary yellow weaves coming out their head, and who are walking around with... I don't want to say with this emulated sense of Eurocentricity, because that's not necessarily correct. It's almost something else. It's this new, almost African-American definition of beauty in terms of what is done with hair and eyes and all of this stuff. And so when I see, think of body positivity as it applies to these particular type of women, if you come and say, okay, well, be happy with your size and da-da-da-da-da, they are. (coughs) Excuse me. The conversation has to shift slightly there and say, you have beautiful brown eyes. What's wrong? Why do you feel the need to have blue eyes? Let's talk about that. Mm Mm-hmm. Why do you feel the need to put blonde in your hair? And there's nothing wrong with any of those things. Let's just be very clear. There's nothing wrong with it. However, from personal conversations that I have had with people, I know where that comes from. And a lot of that comes from trying to fit in, trying to assimilate, trying to get the job, trying to be a part of, trying to be inclusive. And so the failure to acknowledge and recognize that people of color are forced to do things just to make it day to day does Mm -hmm. not fall into the context of this movement is a short sighting of the movement itself because it didn't, I don't think it even recognized that. Right. Yeah, I don't think that was the audience. No, in its in its core. No, and I think some people have tried. Some people, um, some people in groups external to um, kind of white cis women as the as the uh, core founders of the movement have tried to you know adopt it and, and adapt it to their own community. But I think that it there are some inherent limitations, and and you know if you are. Um, all about that body positivity and you have a deeper or different nuanced understanding of it than what we have, we'd love to hear from you. You can tweet me at Dr. Nikki knows um, to get more information. Um, But as, as a black woman who has never fit the, the standard ideal, never, I was a child that, I mean, um, I've been, as they say in the black community, thick my whole life. Um, And I remember, um, it's, Yo, what's up, Mom? it's been it's, You're thick over there. What's up? So, see, <laughs> exactly. Um, and there's a there's a whole another conversation that we can have about objectification. Um, that comes along along with that in the black community. I remember being young, and my uh, paternal grandmother used to always kind of like squeeze my thighs and be like, "Ooh, this is so healthy." Um, and but I had enough sense of um. You know, I was I was kind of an early developer. And I think uh, there's something that goes inherently with being a young girl and a woman in this society around how your body becomes not your own at a very early age um, that happens. And so whenever she would say that, I didn't hear it as a compliment. And I grew up in a very black, very southern um, insulated kind of context. So there were there were other people around that looked like me 
um, but maybe not so much in my immediate family at the time. And so whenever she would say that, I would be embarrassed. Um, and I, I, you know, I developed sooner than some of my other cousins. And so then I was different. And so it wasn't until later in life that I was able to kind of have some internal understanding around this is the way your body is made. Um, you're going to have bigger than norm than than the norm, quote unquote, thighs like you. you This is what you're going to have. Right. Um, there was a time where I was uh, actively a dancer. I was dancing in school and then I was doing dancing in private companies after schools. So I was dancing oftentimes five days a week at a minimum. Um and even through all of that, I still had legs. I still had, uh, you know, uh, hips and curvature in the lower area of my body. Um, but it wasn't until later in life that I started to kind of say, well, this is it. So we don't have to like it or, or not. Um, and let me like it in a particular context. Uh, and then when I went to graduate school and was in social proximity to way to the, it was the first time in life that I had been in that close social proximity to that many white people, um, and particularly white women in graduate school in the Midwest. I encountered body loathing. Like I, I didn't understand what I was. I remember being very shocked and confused about how they would talk about their bodies in such negative terms, um, and the and the things that they would obsess about. That I was just like, but that's like those are hips. They're not. Um, I remember a friend of mine talked about her saddlebags and I was like, what is that? Like, what, what part of the body is that? And she started pointing. She was like, right here, these things. And I was like, those are called hips. And you're a woman post puberty. You should have those things. So I say all that to say that I don't think you can especially be a woman. And maybe Tomas, you can talk about the, the male experience around this. But I don't think you can grow up in this culture as a woman and not have some internal struggle, work, work through resistance, problem, whatever challenge, whatever language you want to put around your body and how it shows up in the world and whether that is accepted, celebrated um, or not um, and how you make sense of that. Like, I think that I think it's a process for most women to come to a place of like happiness um, and acceptance um, and, and uh, celebration of their bodies, regardless of um, kind of race or ethnicity, sexual orientation, et cetera, et cetera. I think it can become compounded for certain people in different ways, shapes and forms. Um, you know, I think about the colorism experience among melanated folks um, in that, you know, the closer you get to white in your skin tone, the more beautiful your um seen as the more um desirable you're seen as and there's actually some research that shows that uh it correlates to job attainment as well as overall lifetime income um so we take these ideas around how we show up physically in the world and they have real impact on how we experience our lives um in the world that go beyond just oh you look cute So the question is, how does one come to a place of finding that middle ground? Um, because you you can't, it's, by middle ground, I mean, for me, it feels like you can't just say, well, I think I look good, period, the end, without recognizing that other people still will perceive you and that there's an interaction that happens there. It doesn't mean you have to internalize how they perceive you wholesale. But I also feel like it means that you can't completely ignore um, other people's experience of you either. Does that make any sense? I'm sorry, I was sipping. You know, I keep a sip. That ain't changed. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> Season not. two, still <laughs> sipping. <laughs> so here's the thing. Can I answer your question by saying this? I don't know, but it seems like you will. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> in September of 2016, okay. the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that dreadlocks uh -huh. or banning dreadlocks during hiring is yep. legal. Legal. Yep. And they just okay. upheld it 
last month. Hey, absolutely. I was just going to go there. So we, we stay in hot topics together, sis. Oh, I said so. we stay. <laughs>